If it's one shot, I'm Harry Kane on the pen. You can't risk a miss when you're trying to get a 10. Rich for your love. How much time Hello and welcome to Couch Talk. I'm going to be bringing you all of the information from Saturday's action in the Premier League and a little bit around Europe. It'll just be a one-to-one -one for today because I don't have anyone available to come and talk to us on the couch. But let's just get cracking with an absolutely phenomenal performance from Norwich City. And let me just add that it's not even a full strength Norwich City. Uh, they were able to take advantage of a very, I'd say a misshapen, not very themselves Manchester City side. And as me being a Liverpool fan, I could not be happier. But let's talk about the game. Let's not talk about my views on it. First of all, I want to uh, say a big shout out to that back line. That back line did everything that they needed to be able to do to make sure that Manchester City could not get that third goal. Obviously, uh, Sam Byram, we had Ben Godfrey, we had Amadou, and then we had Jamal Lewis as a back four. Uh, Sam Byram, just to let you know, joined um, Norwich for £750,000 from West Ham, I think, or it might have been from Notts Forest, but I know he was ex-West Ham. Um, all I want to say is he completed nine combined tackle and interception numbers in that game and uh, was able to do 11 clearances as well. Incredible. I mean, everyone in that back line was uh, just phenomenal from start to finish, but just want to say a shout out to him because I didn't realise he had that quality in him. I've never, seen, I've never seen that quality in him before and I don't think I'll probably ever see it again. But all I can say is after they were hit with injuries, for example, like Max Ahrens was out, they had quite, uh, who was an integral part to their season last year and he stepped in like it was his own. Fantastic display. Uh, but let's talk about their attacking display of Todd Cantwell, who I've actually done a rough diamond piece on. Uh, I've also, also mentioned a lot today about Emiliano Buendia, who was just an absolute workhorse on that right side with uh, Sam Byram, just consistently gave the ability to win the ball back and then created chances from it as well. Absolutely fantastic. I couldn't, I couldn't say anything better about him today. He was playing like Bernardo Silva would in that role, but even kind of showing up Bernardo Silva <laughs> as well. So fantastic work from him. And then the main man, Timu, the Finland finisher at this moment in time, the Premier League Player of the Month for August. And he got on the goal sheet again and also notched an assist for Todd Cantwell, which was fantastic. If it was any other striker, I know they would have took that shot on, uh, but he passed it on a plate for Todd Cantwell to score and it was an absolutely great goal and then Emiliano Buendia was then also able to provide the assist for Timu to uh, he took a quite a, an unusual first touch uh, but managed to poke it in above Edison after that as well Rodri managed to get a goal back towards the latter end of the uh, of the game and left us all nail biting on the edge of our seats but they managed to see it out Congratulations for Norwich, congratulations to all the fans, and thank you very much from Liverpool. Uh, and all I want to say is we're now at the top, five points clear, uh, just after five games, which is absolutely phenomenal for us. On to Liverpool, let's speak about our win a 3-1 against Newcastle United, uh, where we actually conceded first from some suspect defending from Trent Alexander-Arnold, unfortunately. Uh, who was just not tight enough to Dretcher Williams, who uh, shifted it very quickly onto his right foot and smashed it like a thunderbolt into the top uh, right-hand corner. It was absolutely fantastic, and it was at the end where, it was at the Kenny Dalglish end where all of the, uh, sorry, the Anfield Road end where the Newcastle fans were, and they must have loved every second of that. So, fantastic. Uh, to get him on the uh, score sheet given the fact it's his first goal in two and a half years his last goal was actually for AZ Altmar uh, sorry against AZ Altmar for PSV and obviously that was when he was in the area of visit two and a half years ago after that uh, brilliant work down the left hand side from Andrew Robertson who put it into Sadio Mane who opened his body up and put it into the top corner fantastic finish uh, and I expect nothing less from him and then we were unfortunately uh, forced into a change of bringing Divock Origi off for, and then bringing on Roberto Firmino in prematurely uh, but 
I say um, uh, I say that, but he was absolutely fantastic when he came on. Uh, Brazilian flair here, there, and everywhere, flicks and tricks, and one that is I was absolutely incredible to actually set in uh, Mo Salah for the like, third goal to put in uh, put him in and got an assist for that as well. It was in a very tight space. It was like a double touch into the gap and it was absolutely fantastic if you haven't already checked it out on Twitter. All I can say is we're five points clear and not making any assumptions yet because we could be hit very costly with another injury, uh, whether it be Robertson without any cover or anything like that. I don't want don't want us to say that we're, we're favourites for the title at the moment because we're not. Uh, in my opinion, we're not. Manchester City still have a, a better squad overall and they also have and more options in separate, uh, different areas. In my opinion, if I was Manchester City, I'd start playing Wild Cancelo at left back just because Zinchenko was very suspect in certain areas, very wasteful with the ball, um, and obviously try and establish a partnership at the back to be able to solidify them. But all I want to say is thank you very much, Norwich. On to Chelsea now, who stole the show in the three o'clock kickoffs. Uh, with a 5-2 victory over Wolverhampton Wanderers, which actually could be very, very, very significant when it comes towards the latter end of the season when they're going for the same spots in either Champions League or Europa League. Um, and I think if Chelsea are able to get Europa League, that would be quite a positive for their season, given the fact of how mismatched their squad will be. But it didn't show in this game at all. Their academy players were all on the score sheet and have been since the start of the season. Uh, they opened the score sheet with Tamori, of all people, with a fantastic uh, thunderbolt from a corner. Uh, it was absolutely well hit, great strike. Uh, but after that, it was a Tammy Abraham show. A hat trick, um, and also one of the goals was fantastic. The least skill and uh, of the technique to it. He drew the defender in, uh, stopped, and beat him for pace to then create the space to put into the far corner pass through Patricio. Fantastic finish. Can't take anything away from it. And then he was he went on to score an own goal, which is kind of ironic, but it, it wasn't really his own goal at all. Um, Roman Saiz headed on and it was it was uh, knocked in by him and then look, thank God because of my fantasy football Mason Mount then got on the score sheet uh, in injury time and to settle it at 5-2 uh, just a note Patrick Catrone also got his first Premier League goal in this game but we're focusing on the English talent and how much that is promising for us going forward I mean Tamori is going to be, yeah, I want to see more of him in the Premier League to see what he's like. He was uh, Derby's player of the season under Lampard last year, so hopefully we can see more about him this year uh, and then see if he can keep scoring goals as well, It'd be great. And I just think that Tammy Abraham is coming into his essence in the number nine shirt, get rid of that curse uh, that they've obviously had in the past, spending countless money on strikers that just haven't performed to the ability that you'd want. And Tommy Abraham is now joint top goal scorer, so critics aside now, he's a fantastic, he's looking like a fantastic player, uh, but it is only early days, let's see if he can keep this purple patch up and continue to score, but is he coming into the purple patch at the right time to be able to try and sneak into that uh, Euro 2020 squad, and whether he can actually displace either Callum Wilson going forward to see if we can give it uh, maybe a different dynamic instead of Kane in a in a front uh, maybe three or four that'd be interesting to see especially alongside James Madison coming into the team Mason Mount as well getting his first cap very uh, 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 against Bulgaria so that's fantastic to see that going forward so I'm very happy for Chelsea well done Great 5-2 win for you, and I can't believe your academy players are finally coming into the, the line where they deserve to be, um, given the fact that you've sent them out on loan for so long, but from, congratulations, well done. Then we'll go to the other 3 o'clock kickoff, which was Manchester United, who got a 1-0 win against Leicester City. This is an injury-struck uh, Manchester United with no Martial or no Pogba, uh, so I, I actually was assuming that Leicester might be able to take advantage, but I was wrong. And early, uh, Sionku Fowl was able to give away a penalty, which Rashford then converted, and that's how the score stayed. It stayed at 1-0. Uh, they were able to hold out. I don't think there was many clear-cut clear chances for Leicester to... Uh, level at that point but I think that's uh, quite a few points uh, at least one point dropped for um, Leicester who would probably need it at the latter end of the season and a great win for Manchester United uh, who obviously looking to be able to recapture any kind of form 
and also make sure that their injuries aren't missed too much. So congratulations Manchester United, uh, well done Marcus Rashford, also pushing for that England, England um, form that he, pro he provided over the uh, international break, so congratulations. Now we're going to head out of England and we're going to go to Germany uh, where I'd like to talk about Borussia Dortmund winning 4-0 against Bayer Leverkusen uh, with Paco Alcacer opening the score sheet uh, with another goal taking his form from last year. He was also, he scored five in four games this year now uh, and he's also converting at a rate of around 63 minutes per goal and that's what he was converting at 68 last year so he's con still bringing it through somehow I think last year he did it because he was mostly coming off the bench but now because he's there starting number nine um, he's still continuing this brilliant vein of form that he's currently in so he was able to open the score sheet a brace from Marco Royce uh, and a final one from Rafa Guerrero blue Leverkusen uh, out of the park and I'd just like a special mention to Thomas Delaney in this game who was able to notch up 12 uh, tackles in interceptions which is phenomenal in the middle of the park alongside Fitzel and was able to shut down any kind of threats that came forward from Leverkusen so well done to the black and yellow and we'll able to see if that is able to get them again on RB Leipzig who drew with Bayern Munich today with Robert Lewandowski opening a score sheet early from a Muller assist and then I thought if it's this early the, the floodgates might open and the attacking I was wrong. Uh, I did actually suspect RB Leipzig to take this from the start because of Julian Nagelsmann's surge on the, the front three especially or front four. Uh, sorry, especially on Timo Werner and Poulsen. Uh, but according to uh, James Horncastle, who's a, uh, a substantial writer, that Emil Forsberg was actually in a pivot role, a double pivot role, and was able to perform fa fairly well. Uh, he actually converted the penalty uh, to level the score sheet, and that's how it ended up. So there are two points dropped from either side, three gained for Dortmund, Let's see where the Bundesliga can go and see if these three titans can continue all the way to the end. That's it for today. And what I'm going to be able to go from here is talk about three Lions. It might be up very, very soon. Uh, we're going to be seeing a team of the week, uh, obviously, for Tammy Abraham. So I can't wait to start that series. Uh, FIFA 20 is out very, very soon. Uh, also, we've got the Champions League around the corner starting from Tuesday. So if I can do any kind of preview for them teams, and I will, I can't wait to get that out. Uh, and then all I'd like to say is a, a shout out to StatZone, who obviously quite uh, been very, very helpful retweeting a lot of the things. And I'm also using their stats and data to be able to provide the knowledge that I have on there. And obviously while I was watching the games as well. So thank you very much to StatZone. I just want to say thank you very much for watching. And I guess we'll see you guys on the next... Uh, video. Thank you very much. Bye.